All right, we're going to keep going on chapter 22. Everybody got their exams in the drop box. Um, I will be posting the key on the fifth floor of Roland Hall across from the Oakham stock room um, this afternoon, later this afternoon. Are there any questions before we get started? Anybody? All right. All right, we were talking about acidity of the alpha carbon for carbonyl compounds. Uh, we have um, regular carbonyl compounds and then we have um, active methylene compounds. So in a regular carbonyl compound here, like, like this ketone, this has a pKa of about 20. Um, if we add a, a, a second activate, so this is an activating group, if we add a second activating group, the pKa um, it becomes much more acidic. So we were showing how the direction of equilibrium is completely changed based on which type of compound you have. So this has a pKa of about 20. And so we showed the ratio of equilibrium 10 to the fifth to 1. And now let's do the same thing using the same base with an active methylene compound. All right, so when we, when we made the base, when we, when we um, made the conjugate um, base here, we had one oxygen to push electrons onto. And here we have, we, have one, we have one carbonyl here, we have another carbonyl here, so we have two different oxygen to uh, uh, remove, to, to put that charge onto. So let's show the resonance structures for this. Let's go over here to the right. So that would look like that. Notice in this resonance structure, the other carbonyl is conjugated with the double bond of the enolate. And then we can now go and ahead and move those electrons all the way over onto the other carbonyl. And in that resonance structure, we also have conjugation with the other carbonyl and the double bond of the enolate ion. So as you can see, we have something that's much more um, resonance stabilized. So highly resonance stabilized. pKa is 9. That makes good sense. pKa is 9, so it's much more acidic because our conjugate base is much more stable. What's the ratio at equilibrium? Let's see. Let's take a look here. All right. Our acid on this side of the equation is a pKa of 9. Uh, let's draw our conjugate acid over here. That would be methanol, pKa 15. And as you can see, the equilibrium is favored in the opposite direction. Now we're favored to the right. Ratio at equilibrium, what would it be? One to the 10, not one to 16. Ah. I was saying it, but writing the opposite thing. 1 to 10 to the 6th. Okay, so we've completely switched the equilibrium. So with, the, with um, a ketone, you can't completely remove the um, acidic alpha hydrogen with methanol. You're only going to form a very small amount of the product. One for every 10 to the 5th of the, um, of the untouched um, ketone. 
If, however, you have an active methylene compound, so essentially two ketones, then now we've completely flipped things. We have now 10 to the 6 um, deprotonated um, compounds for every non-deprotonated. So ratio completely switches using the same exact base. All right, so what if we wanted to completely deprotonate acetone? We would have to use a stronger base. So active methylene compound, don't need a stronger base. With um, non-active methylene compound, uh, we need a stronger base. And the, the most common base that we're going to use is something called uh, LDA. You are, feel free to use that abbreviation, lithium diisopropyl amide is our base. And how you make this is you take an amine and you deprotonate with uh, n-butyl lithium. So this is n-butyl lithium. And so what we have here, just an acid-base reaction. In order to deprotonate amine, you need a really strong um, base. And so that's our really strong base. And so there is our LDA. All right, so here's a typical reaction here on the next page. Uh, let's just change this to a two and draw out that carbon-hydrogen bond. And we need two lone pairs, don't we? There's two lone pairs on that nitrogen. So let's add another lone pair. All right, so we're going to grab those, we're going to grab that hydrogen. And where are we going to move those electrons? We can move them onto carbon or we can move them all the way up onto oxygen. Or we can move them onto carbon and then draw the resonance structure where they're pushed all the way up onto oxygen. I'm just going to, and I'm going to go back and forth because um, you don't have to draw both resonance structures every time. And in fact, you can go straight to pushing electrons up onto oxygen if you like. And let's just make sure that equilibrium is favored. So we're going directly to the resonance structure where the negative charge is on oxygen. And then you get diisopropylamine. And I drew that one wrong. Let's fix that. And now let's determine the direction of equilibrium and make sure that that base is strong enough. pKa is about 20 for the ketone. For this, for this particular um, amine, this is our acid on this side of the equation, um, this is pKa of 40. So as you can see, um, we go from stronger acid to weaker acid, very long arrow to the right, very short arrow. Um, at equilibrium, we have, what do we have? One, one acetone for every 10 to the 20th deprotonated acetone. So why do we use LDA instead of other bases? Um, it is a strong, strong nucleophilic um, base. Strong non-nucleophilic base, sorry about that. It is too hindered to act as a nucleophile. And that's important because um, we know all the reactions that can happen when you, when you um, attack carbonyls. So this is what you would form if it attacked as a nucleophile, but it's too hindered. And so you don't get that. So we'll put a big X through that. You don't form that. 
So you see how you, you wouldn't want to use, you have to be really careful with the bases you choose. You wouldn't want to use butyl lithium to remove that alpha proton, would you? What would happen instead? It's going to, it would attack the carbonyl. So you're going to have that competition there, okay? So let's talk about the mechanism for ketoenol tautomerization. And you already know a little bit of this, right? You know the acid catalyzed mechanism? If you go all the way back to chapter 10 where we did alkynes, hydration of alkynes, and that was one of the mechanisms where I said this is guaranteed to be on the midterm and that's why because it gets you, prepares you for this material here. So we'll do base catalyze first and base catalyze is what you get when you do, um, when you do hydroboration of an alkyne and then you follow that with peroxide, sodium hydroxide, remember that? You got tautomerization. That would be base catalyzed. When you hydrate an alkyne, that's acid catalyzed. So we're going to talk about both of them here. All right, so do base catalyze first. We'll use hydroxide as our base. So notice on that, that time I left electrons on carbon. I could also push them all the way up onto oxygen and we'll be doing that also. And so unless I tell you to draw both resonance structures, you don't need to worry about doing that. So here we're going to go boom here, push electrons up onto oxygen to draw the second resonance structure. So we're going back the other direction, aren't we? In, back in chapter 10, we went, the, we went from the enol to the keto form. Now we're going from the keto to the enol form. So keto and enol tautomerization, just back the other direction. So as we said already, for most simple ketones, the keto form is going to be more stable than the enol form. Nevertheless, the enol is a crucial intermediate in a variety of reactions with ketones and aldehydes. So even though it's not favored, as long as we're forming a small amount of it, we can do reactions with it, okay? doesn't have to be completely favored. We can form a small amount of it and do, do reactions, which we'll see coming up. All right, and so here's our resonant stabilized enolate ion. All right, so that's point number one. Point number two is the enolate ion is a powerful nucleophile. This is the reactivity that we're going to see. And really, this reactivity you can show from either resonance structure. I've got two resonance structures here. You can draw from either resonance structure. And since that's nucleophilic carbon, I'm going to have my generic electrophile here. Um, or we can draw it from the other resonance structure. And what I do is I leave it up to you to decide which one you like better. And so as we're doing mechanisms um, in this part of, in this chapter, I'm going to be going back and forth from using either one of those resonance structures. So the arrow pushing is going to look a little different depending on which resonance structure that you're going to work from. Here we're going to attack just directly from carbon. If you draw this resonance structure, you have the electrons on oxygen come down and then we attack the electrophile like that. So those are the two, that's the two reactivity, the reactivity that we'll see 
from either resonance structure. So notice what we've done, we've incorporated an electrophile into the alpha position. And that's the key thing here. Electrophile, and I'm off the page here, um, to the alpha position. By the way, I did post those podcasts like last night that you were really looking forward to watching for a carbonyl nomenclature, okay? Okay, that's base catalyzed. Questions on the base catalyzed mechanism, anybody? All right, let's do acid catalyzed. What do we almost always do first in an acid catalyzed mechanism? Pretty the carbonyl first. Yep. Protonate the carbonyl. And I'm going to also draw this two ways. And you get to pick which way you think looks better. That's resonance structure number one. And we can move electrons on to oxygen to draw resonance structure number two. All right, so that's a resonance structure. Uh, those are two resonance structures for the protonated ketone. And now we need to remove the alpha hydrogen. Our base is very weak, but we've enhanced um, the reactivity by protonating oxygen. So I'm going to draw this from either resonance structure, and you can choose which one you like the best. In this one here, we're going to remove the alpha hydrogen here. Electrons from the carbon-hydrogen bond move over here to make a new double bond. And then we push electrons up onto oxygen. And that looks a little bit, some students don't like that method because it looks like we're removing a, a, you know, a, a hydrogen from a carbon and with a really, really weak base. And that, that bothers some students, OK? So, the other way to do this, and this will probably look for more familiar to you, is we just remove this. And you can see what reaction is this that we saw in chapter 8? That's just an E1, right? And in E1, you can use a weak uh, base. So this is, you can see, it maybe, so, so a lot of students like the second way better because that's an E1. And now it looks, it's not so bothersome that we're taking and removing a hydrogen from carbon. Because um, we have that carbon, we have the carbocation on the adjacent carbon. So, but you get to choose. So acid catalyzed, again, I literally just touch this thing and it scrolls at like a huge amount. All right, so an enol has an electron-rich double bond. When electrons from this double bond attack an electrophile, the resulting cation is stabilized through resonance with the oxygen atom. And so this is the reactivity that we will see.
All right, so we have electrons on oxygen. Electrons in oxygen are going to come down. We're going to grab the electrophile, which is going to go into the beta position. So there's our electrophile in the beta position, and certainly that is resonance stabilized. So it looked like that. The other way um, that you can do this, well, well, let, let me draw the product first and then we'll show the other way you can do this. So, well, I'm not going to draw the product. What you're doing in the next step, and we'll see that coming up, is, is deprotonate. Um, but the other way that you can do this that you might like better, if you're remembering 51B, Okay, so it looks like this. You could have the, um, we could just have the, the arrow come from the pi bond. So we did this when we were hydrating alkynes. Electrophile goes on the side where you're going to get the best um, carbocation. The best carbocation is where the carbocation is on the carbon that's bonded to the hydroxyl. And then remember we did, so in, so in chapter 10 our electrophile was an acid, which was a proton, okay? And if you do it that way, maybe that makes more sense for a lot of students. And let me fix that. That should be electrophile here. So that's how we're going to incorporate electrophile in the alpha position with an acid catalyzed mechanism. Um, let's take a little, let's do a little show of hands um, for these last two. Who likes this one better? Who likes this one better? More of you. Yeah. So you can draw it either way. Okay. Excuse me? I'm missing a positive charge, right? Which purple resonance? That one? Oh, yeah, I am missing a positive charge. We'll do it green. We'll do a green positive charge there. Okay. Question? Yeah, you know what? We changed this. Eh, whatever. Let's, let's, uh, yeah. You want, would you like this better? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. All my green corrections, let's just draw them in here. Okay, are we good now? All right, so reactions at the alpha carbon. We're going to have acid catalyzed, we're going to have base catalyzed. We have different reactive intermediates. In an acid catalyzed reaction, our, our reactive compound is an enol. In base, it's an enolate ion, okay? So you got to remember that. In base, this is what we're going to see. If you use that resonance structure or if you use this resonance structure, It's going to look like this. So enolate. Enolate ion is going to be our reactive intermediate. In acid, it's going to be an enol. So let's draw the two ways to show that. So we can have the electrons on oxygen come down, grab the electrophile like that, 
or we can do the electrophile, the double bond attack the electrophile, make the resonance structure that has the um, positive charge on the carbon that's bonded to the hydroxyl. And then of course we can draw the resonance structure there. Okay? So those are your choices. But you want to keep it straight. If you're in an acid catalyzed mechanism, you don't want to make an enolate ion. If you're in a base catalyzed mechanism, you won't need to make the enol, right? I mean you could, uh, but you don't need to make the enol because the reactive intermediate is the enol. I mean it's the enolate ion. Okay, let's talk about racemization. So, um, because when we have formation of enols and then we go back from enol, ketol, tautomerization, notice we have reversible arrows, that reaction is going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Even if you're only forming a tiny amount, it's still going back and forth and back and forth. So what that means is if you have a chiral alpha carbon, you have a really big problem. You're going to racemize your, your chiral alpha carbon. So let's take a look at that. All you need is a trace of acid or base and, and you literally don't even need to add it. Just the inside of glassware is acidic enough to catalyze this reaction. So if you're working with compounds like this where we have a chiral alpha carbon, you actually have to treat the glassware to get rid of all the acidic groups so that it won't uh, racemize. Okay? It's, it's, a really, it's a really big um, issue. So you start off optically pure. Even if you have really pure solvent, just the inside of the glassware is enough. So you're going to get racemization. Nobody wants to get racemization, I'll tell you that. So I'm going to draw, I'll draw both enantiomers here. Racemic mixture. So this can be base catalyzed or acid catalyzed. I'm going to show you another reaction that's similar. So for this one, I'm, for racemization, I'm going to choose base. And then for the deuter, putting a, de, a deuterium in the alpha position, I'm going to use acid. And those are, we, we could, those mechanisms will be the same for both. All right, so let's show how this happens in base. All right, so if we have um, a, let's say, let's say we have a little tiny bit of hydroxide around. I'm going to go directly to the resonance structures where we move electrons up onto oxygen so you can see the problem that we have here. And we know this is the most important resonance structure, so let's see what happens here. What just happened to that stereo center? Gone. Boom. Okay, so we go from uh, sp3 carbon to sp2 planar. sp2 and therefore planar. And that's not going to stay like that. We're going to reverse that reaction. And so we, but we can, we, the, but now that we have a planar intermediate, it can reprotonate from the top or it can reprotonate from the bottom. So the water can come in, so you have this planar intermediate, water can come in from the top and it can come in from the bottom. If it comes in from the top, you form um, one enantiomer. If it comes in from the bottom, you form the other enantiomer. So electrons come down. Here is it coming in from the top. Or electrons come down and it can, it can come in from the bottom. So here is the green arrow. So protonation on top and bottom.
gives racemic mixture. All right, so that's something that you have to worry about if you have um, carbonyl compounds that have al uh, chiral alpha carbons. Another thing that you can do is you can do deuterium exchange to make deuterated compounds so the alpha hydrogens can be exchanged for deuterium. And so that's going to look like, let's see, depending on how long you let this go, You can get deuteriums incorporated into all alpha positions. So all what we call enolizable hydrogens. Eventually replaced with deuterium. Let's see how that mechanism works. So I did, I did base catalyze. It's really the same mechanism, except now we're just using a deuterium instead. I did the, I did the racemization in base catalyze. Now I'm going to do acid catalyze for this one here. I am not going to show incorporation of all four deuteriums. I'm going to show incorporation of one. And, sorry, if I ask you this mechanism on the test, do I want to see all four or do I want to see just one? Just one, okay? So, acid catalyzed mechanism. An enol is our um, nucleophile. So we need to make the enol. So we want, to, we want to do the deprotonation with water, then that will regenerate our catalyst. Notice that our, our catalyst is going to start to get um, hydrogens incorporated into it. So it's going to look like that. So remember, in the acid catalyzed mechanism, the enol is the nucleophile. So we can use that or we can use um, some acid that doesn't already have a hydrogen incorporated. Electrons on oxygen are going to come down. We're going to grab deuterium. And we certainly could grab hydrogen just as easily. Um, and so basically you have to get this, uh, you have to let this go for a long time and you, you periodically have to replace your acid if you want it all completely converted to deuteriums. And when you do that, We have one hydrogen and we have one deuterium. So we got to keep going. This is going to go for a long time. And so we're going to repeat three more times. So 
So all four hydrogens converted to deuteriums. And then in the last step, we deprotonate. So same thing going on here. The only thing is we can actually detect what's going on by noticing that we have deuteriums incorporated into the alpha position. In the first reaction we did that was base catalyzed, you notice because you lose your optical purity. Questions on either one of those reactions? Anybody? Yeah. Absolutely, I don't want you to do it three times, yeah. We don't want to grade three, uh, that done four times in a row. Because like what if you do it like three times right, one time wrong, or two times right, one time wrong, you know what I'm saying? My TAs would not, would not like me. Just, Dimitri says give you no points. <laughs> okay. All right, so you can incorporate a proton in the alpha position. We've just done that twice. That's an electrophile, right? A proton. Um, we could also incorporate a, a bromine into the alpha position. So let's look at that. So here, E plus equals um, bromine. In the last two examples, the E plus was um, an acid, okay, a proton. We're going to do an acid catalyzed mechanism for this. We're going to do a base catalyzed mechanism. We're actually going to get different products based on acid or base. Okay, you've seen that before, right? Chapter 21, we got different products depending on whether we used acid or base. Remember that? Acetal, hemiacetal, right? So this is like this. You get, a, you get a different product. All right. So we're going to do the acid catalyze first. Protonate the carbonyl first. All right, we protonated the carbonyl first. Now we're going to remove an alpha hydrogen. So let me draw in the alpha hydrogen. I'll just do CH2 and put an, a hydrogen here. What are we going to use to deprotonate that with? We're going to use water. We, do we want to use hydroxide? No, because hydroxide would be um, half acid, half, half, half acid catalyzed, half base catalyzed. You don't want to do that. So I'm going to remove this. I'm going to go all the way up onto oxygen to make the enol because we know that enol is our nucleophile. So that's what we want to make. Bromine's our electrophile, so now bromine's ready to come in. So it looks like that, right? Same as a proton, except all we're doing is we're grabbing bromine. We're breaking the bromine-bromine bond. Our new electrophile has been incorporated into the alpha position. That's a bromine. And then in the last step, we can use water or bromide ion. to deprotonate. Your choice. Questions on the acid catalyzed mechanism? So, in the acid catalyzed mechanism, let's write the product up here. Now that we've just drawn it, let's write it. Replacement of one alpha hydrogen in acid.
in the acid catalyzed mechanism. So, got to remember that. All right, now, so what about base catalyzed? Oh, notice I say base promoted rather than base catalyzed. So now you know something different is going to happen. Well, sometimes it's catalyzed, sometimes it's, it's, pro, it's uh, promoted. We'll see. You'll see coming up. All right, something different is happening here. All alpha positions are converted. All enolizable hydrogens are converted to bromines. And if that's what you're doing, um, that, that actually can be catalytic in base. But if you have a methyl ketone, if you have a methyl ketone, um, you get a different product. So if a methyl ketone is used, you need um, one equivalent of, hydro, of high OH minus. So this here can be catalytic. You need one equivalent of OH minus. So what's going to happen is um, the same sort of thing. On this right hand side, you're going to get CBr3, but that's unstable under the reaction conditions. And so it's going to react with the stoichiometric hydroxide. And then when you follow that with acid, you get a carboxylic acid. That was a big surprise there. And HCBr3. Um, Bromoform. So you've heard of chloroform. Chloroform would have three chlorines and hydrogen. This is bromoform. And so um, with bromine, it's called a bromoform reaction. With iodine, it also works with iodine. It's called, what do you think? Iodoform. Yeah, you got it. All right, we've got, we have time to do the mechanism. So I know you're really curious how you get a carboxylic acid out of that. Okay, so let's do that right now. I don't want to make you wait for that. Base catalyzed mechanism. Do we protonate the carbonyl first? No. We remove our um, alpha hydrogen and we go directly to our reactive intermediate, which is an enolate ion. You can leave your electrons on carbon or you can push them all the way up onto to oxygen. Your choice. You don't have to draw both resonance structures. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to go back and forth. Sometimes I'll leave the electrons on carbon. Sometimes I'm going to push them up onto oxygen. But you have the choice. This time um, I'm, I'm wanting to push electrons onto oxygen here. So enolate ion in base is our reactive intermediate. That's our nucleophile. So what you'll notice is the um, uh, base catalyzed mechanisms are always a little bit shorter than the acid catalyzed mechanisms. So now your bromine comes in. Electrons on oxygen come down. And we're going to grab a bromine. And we're going to break the bromine-bromine bond. And you're done. See how much shorter that is. 
Uh, that's going to repeat two more times. All right, so now we've got three bromines incorporated. And we're kind of leaving R a mystery, but uh, once you have one bromine incorporated, the, the bromines are going to go on to that same side. This is unstable. So what happens is the hydroxide ion is going to attack the carbonyl. So now we're going back into comfortable material that you've been seeing all quarter. And we have two potential leaving groups. We have hydroxide and we have CBr3 minus. And um, it turns out that the electrons on oxygen come down and kick off CBr3 minus. And that CBr3 minus that you just kicked off uh, can't resist uh, deprotonating that carboxylic acid that just formed. So you get a carboxylate, you get HCBr3, and then um, in the second step you add acid. Add H3O plus in second step. And that's how you isolate the carboxylic acid. So notice what we've done. We turned a ketone into a carboxylic acid. We know no other way to do that. that we've talked about. Um, you know, I, I know that you guys are creative and you can think of some ways to do that. Maybe take that. Um, ketone, do an elimination, then do ozonolysis. Yeah, you can do that. This is a one-step way to do that. That gives you the carboxyl. So remember that transformation. Ke methyl ketone to carboxylic acid. If it's an ethyl ketone, will this work? No, it has to be a methyl ketone. All right, so you're, I know you're dying to know how we can have a carbocation as an intermediate, right? Not a carbocation, a carbanion. What am I even saying here? Carbanion. Okay, I can see you're really upset about that. Okay, it turns out that um, if you think about this particular carbanion, Those bromines are actually um, removing electron density from the carbon, pulling electron density away, and that stabilizes the carbanion. So this is a stabilized carbanion. Inductive effect of the three bromines. The three bromines makes carbon less negative. And it turns out that you need to have all three of them. If you only incorporate two halogens, it's not a good enough leaving group. So that's why you need to have a methyl ketone. We'll talk more about this next time.